Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through 24 tips for watercolour painting line and wash. I say 24, but there will probably be more. So the first tip is to keep your colours nice and clean. Here I'm coming in with fresh, pure cadmium yellow. Next tip, when you're applying zigzag patterns for ripples in water, keep those patterns, whether it's for reflections or the ripples themselves, random. Next tip, notice the reflected headlights of the car form a V shape. That helps to add a sense of perspective. My next tip, moving on to the sky, is to vary the width of your lines when you make marks in the sky. And then moving on to the purple at the top of the sky, vary your mark making by varying the style of by varying the style of brush stroke. I'm going to a kind of scumbled dry brush approach at the top of the sky, which introduces a contrast to the marks made with the yellow. Next tip, when painting a background around an existing foreground figure or object, vary the brush strokes around the figure. Notice it looks as though the background could have been painted first and then the figure drawn in front of it. You definitely want to avoid painting an artificial halo by having your background brush stroke follow the outline to the outline of the figure. That's something to definitely avoid. Next tip, dark colors next to pale light colors make those light colors pop more than they would. My next tip is to keep the background washes nice and pale and dilute. They're going to look very weak and non impactful initially. But when you add brighter foreground colors, they're going to come into their own because they're going to create a sense of depth in the painting. The next tip is for objects which are off in the background, like the car and the cattle. If you're using a weak background wash and a waterproof ink like the Unipin marker I've used here, you can just paint your wash straight over the background uh, features. It's going to help them merge into the background, creating a sense of depth. The next tip is when painting ripples in water, as mentioned before, vary the, um, the marks you make. You can include perspective lines which go off in a diagonal direction like I'm doing right now, going from bottom right hand corner off towards the upper left of the water. And by making the ripples dark as I've done and leaving some areas of the painting as unpainted paper, that's going to maximize your contrast. It's going to make that surface look more reflective. So we've got the background laid in fairly well. This painting, by the way, was inspired by the same trip to the car dealership that inspired last Sunday's painting. So this guy was just in the wait in the in the showroom and I just sketched him as he stood there with his arms folded. So my next tip is to make the everyday moments in your life artistic adventures because you never know where a quick sketch is going to lead. Next tip, test out the color you're going to use on a foreground character with a weak bit of wash like I just did. And then if happy, you can come in with a stronger version like I am now. If you're unhappy, the wash that you put down as a test will be weak enough that you can cover it up. Next tip, be quick and bold with your washes, especially on the foreground characters. Don't get overly fussy. Next tip, the reflections should be approximately the same depth below the water surface as they are as the object that you're reflecting is above the water surface. The reflections themselves should be paler and definitely not brighter than the object that they're reflecting. And keep the reflections simple and broken if you're reflecting in water. So notice that I'm not filling in the blue that's reflected from the jeans. I'm definitely leaving random gaps in that reflection because if you've got ripples in the water, it's not a nice, plain, smooth mirror surface. Those reflections are going to be broken up in a random way. Next tip, feel free to explore beyond the bounds of reality. You don't need to paint cows or anything else for that matter in their conventional color. So try something different. I like painting my black cattle blue, and that's become a bit of a motif in my work. And this leads me to my next tip. Is the motif you're using something that you genuinely enjoy doing and that, you know, you find rewarding as an artist? Or have you just sort of run out of ideas and you're repeating the motif out of habit? 
do you want to change direction? Now, that's a question everyone has to answer for themselves, but it's something I would recommend asking yourself once in a while to try and stay open minded. At the moment, I'm very happy doing blue cattle, but that may change in the future. Next up, when painting a face, especially on a small scale, but I think it's true in general in watercolour, don't worry about the details. Just blast the watercolour in and let it work its magic. If you want, if you feel you've gone too dark, my next tip is you can lift things off with the brush, but do it immediately like I'm doing now so that the watercolour is still responsive for you. Notice also that I created the nose there. There wasn't really a nose in the drawing. I just kind of used the corner of the brush to create a little triangle to indicate where the nose was. My next tip is when you eventually get to the stage that you're happy with the watercolour washes, make sure you let them dry completely before coming in with the pen. But we'll get to the coming in with the pen again uh, a little bit later. Next tip is that background objects or people should be kept very simple in their treatment. In particular, the treatment should be simpler than that of foreground items. So if you think about the level of complexity, which isn't very high on my foreground figure, the cattle and the car are painted in even less detail and the drawings even simpler as well. So my next tip is the most distant object doesn't really apply to this painting, but the most distant object in a landscape or any scene, if you're going for really, really distant stuff, which I'm not doing here, but you can make that most distant object just a silhouette. And although it won't look very realistic in isolation, in contrast to the more detailed foreground things, it's really going to help your painting. Next tip is to keep shadows and a sense of light just simple in everything you do. If you want to go more detailed later, that's fine. But initially, just think of it as light and dark. Where's the light coming from? Where are the shadows? What are the big shapes? And just treat it very, very simply. Next tip, you can see I've switched to a, a round brush tip now. I was using a flat before. The flat is great and very expressive, but don't make things overly difficult for yourself by trying to fill in a tiny area with too big a brush. Definitely big brushes are good for being expressive, but they do have their limits. Next, when you put in the shadows, be quick with your mark making as well. Confident marks tend to look better, even if they're not precise. So. You're better off doing that, in my opinion, be confident with a small error rather than hesitant with a small error. On average, confident works out better. As mentioned, let the painting completely dry before coming in with your pen to enhance any line work. And my next tip is mixed media paper that I'm using here today. Absolutely great for this line and wash technique. But another tip is don't scrub the surface to try and lift off watercolour. The surface of mixed media paper is not as robust as watercolour paper. Next tip, if you want to enhance the lines of your initial drawing, then fine, go ahead. Maybe use a thicker nib than you used for the initial drawing. And again, just be quick and light and expressive for the final stages. Try and maintain that spontaneity that you had right at the early stages when you didn't care. You can't be too worried about the final result. You just want to keep things nice and fresh. Next tip, be limited or limit yourself with the amount of extra detail you add. The detail you add will have much more impact if you're um, economical with it than if you bring up the entire picture to the same level of detail. So you can see I've added some shadow and some texture to the foreground figure. I'm adding a little bit to that foreground cow now, but you know, that's kind of it really. Next tip is to don't, you know, don't be afraid to delve into the surreal. What's going on in this painting? Well, we don't know. Maybe this guy's just lost his car keys, but we don't know why the cows are walking through the water or why indeed he appears to have parked his car in the sea or a lake. I don't know where this little experiment in the imagination will lead, but if I hadn't tried, then I would never know. So here's the finished painting. You can hopefully read into it a story of your own. If you do come up with anything, I would love to hear it in the comments below. But either way, I hope you found the video helpful. 
Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks again for watching.